Welcome to another episode of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at the News Forum, where all voices matter. Well, it's not just you. In the space of a few decades, Canada's and other countries' ability to manufacture has been destroyed or severely degraded. This has led to multiple consequences, but there are also solutions. We're pleased to welcome Nigel Southway. He is the author of Take Back Manufacturing, an Imperative for Western Economies. Welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Uh, first question, obvious one, uh, what made you write the book? Well, this new book is a continuation of, a, of the Take Back Manufacturing Advocacy Group that we started in 2010. You know, I was in China. I came back from China in 2010, um, having been there for five years, moving manufacturing offshore. And I was horrified with what I had assisted in hollowing out, which was our manufacturing base locally. And so many of us felt that it was probably one of the dumbest things we'd ever done in the Western world. And so uh, at the Society of Manufacturing Engineers, uh, we formed the Take Back Manufacturing Advocacy uh, to review how to take it back. You know, very grandiose, but that's what we did. Uh, we got a lot of support from many of societies and associations and industrial media were very supportive. Uh, we published many articles and constructed a firm logical argument for manufacturing's recovery. So I decided to write the book now as I, I really think that uh, we're, we're going to see a huge political shift due to ongoing decline in prosperity and inflation and most probably some form of recession. Um, and this is going to drive a significant increase in, in voter attention for uh, economic issues and probably promote a strong desire uh, to move towards more localized trade and and a reduction of imports and a focus on national productivity and prosperity, as well as national security. There's many things lining up now that, that make this possi possibly a, an outcome. So my new book provides position on that, and it, it covers the history and the current issues and, and policy roadmap that uh, would, would assist take back manufacturing and get back our prosperity. Um, so uh, that's why I wrote the book. It's an imperative for the Western right. world. Yeah. And, and and I, I want to start to support any political shift that gets us aligned to do something. Well, your timing might be impeccable on this, certainly. Um, before we get into that, however, maybe just give our audience a, an example or two of manufacturing that has been lost over time. Well, just about electronics industry would be a good start. I grew up, I was at Motorola in the 80s and we were doing great. Um, and then by the end of the 90s, early 2000s, it was offshore. You won't find much manufacturing capability uh, in the electronics industry. Now that's reversing. Uh, we're seeing some reshoring taking place in that industry. And yet it was a low cost labor content industry. You know, labor content was only about five or 6%. So to take that offshore, you know, it wasn't about low cost labor, it was other things. But that's an industry that's been decimated if you want one. Right. Uh, even even parts of our food industry are pretty scary. Uh, we got a lot of a lot of dislocation and disconnects in that industry. Uh, uh, some of the automotive industry, it's amazing how much when you can, when you look at read my book, you'll see that we only sh drive down the street uh, about fifteen percent of our car. The rest is made offshore. You know, that, that, that's interesting and would be surprising to Canadians because, of course, uh, we do have this. Uh, uh, domestic uh, auto assembly plant uh, industry, but you're saying a lot of that is offshore too. When you when you run the numbers, uh, we're, we're, we we struggle to get into double digits on content locally when you add it all up across the whole supply chain uh, on the average in North America. Uh, so, uh, you know, even the automotive industry that was a bellwether for, say, Ontario, where I live, uh, is a small percentage of the game when you look at the total value of the vehicle. Right, um, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, in uh, in some of these, as you mentioned, it's a national security issue as well, right? Well, you know, obviously, the, a lot of the business leaders are seeing reshoring being necessary. They're seeing in interest rates going up, long supply chains are going to grab a lot of inventory. Uh, so there's a lot of commercial reasons why reshoring would take place. But also, uh, it's beginning to be obvious that national security and, and just the ability to, to, to have your own interest. I mean, you know, it's fundamental. If you make what you make what you consume, you've got more security. Right. Uh, otherwise, you're relying on other people. And it's, you know, it's a dangerous world, so to speak. And, and, and we need to protect something as important as how we eat and, and how we we can run our businesses. So there's a lot of reasons why reshoring is going to take place. Commercial reasons 
and also we've got a considerable amount of you know political reasons which are growing which is good news in right, a way for right. me indeed we're going to take a brief break nigel we'll be back after that break please stay okay. with us welcome back to boom and bust i'm your host tony clement here with Nigel Southway. He is the author of Take Back Manufacturing. Nigel, uh, we're just talking about the uh, trying to unpack the, the problem of uh, uh, non-domestic manufacturing, if you will. Uh, have governments played a part in this problem as well? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I would say that uh, since uh, 2000, we've not had the, you know, there's not been enough attention span on trade balance and just the impact uh, of offshoring a, a considerable amount of our wealth. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I would say it goes back to, uh, you know, previous administrations significantly, you know, probably when China opened up. And I talk about it in the book, but, you know, there's a whole raft of reasons why we globalize manufacturing, not all of them to do with our economics or to do with, you know, sharing, sharing uh, uh, you know, wealth across the globe. Uh, so we didn't do it right. We could have done this differently. What's annoying is that we could have got to the same place uh, with with a lot more benefit to to our, our and our citizens. We 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 demoralized our citizens with this journey. It it felt good at the time. I went to China. It felt great. Uh, but you know, we we suddenly found out that uh, it, it's not cool. Uh, it's, we've done a lot a lot of damage here. A lot of damage. Certainly, it wasn't a, a free. Uh, in the sense that uh, there was a cost associated with offshoring, right? A, a cost in terms of our own economy. Yeah, uh, the free trade, global free trade has not worked for us. It's been a wealth transfer machine. It's been more of a, a wealth transfer than a wealth creation machine. In fact, you know, if you look at the, since 1980, globalized trade has increased eight times, whereas our, you know, global prosperity by almost three. You know, so it's gone. so you look at the numbers. It's a wealth transferring system, and uh, it's it's been from us to somebody else. Still trying to uh, get to all facets of unpacking this issue. Uh, what about corporations uh, that have built these globalized supply chains? Uh, what what's your comment on their role in all of this? Well, globalization. You know. Uh, Corporations will do what's best for corporations. Um, you know, I, I believe that they're like fire. They need to be, fire is very useful to mankind. It needs to be controlled, and so should corporations. Uh, so government didn't play the game with the corporations correctly and, 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 and you know, put the kind of controls in place uh, that would give the national control of the economy. Uh, to, you know, they allowed the corporations to really uh Get, get out of control in terms of their ability to move materials and, and capital around. It's not just uh, products and materials, it's also capital, that some of it is is part of the economy, not part of a, a capitalistic society. So, you know, it goes to the economists. I blame, uh, if I blame anybody, it would be almost uh, uh, religious fanaticism on the part of economists as far as free trade is concerned. And now we're seeing a lot of papers written uh, when it suits them that that says that free trade probably wasn't about wasn't a great idea. Um, so I, I see a, a few economists beginning to reset on what would normally have been a, a, a no brainer for them, which is free trade. Right, right, right. Uh, so now here we are. Uh, we're in the present now uh, there. As you alluded to, there seems to be a reconsideration of the supply chains. So. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about that. Your your analysis of that with respect to China and elsewhere. Uh, basically, when you run the numbers, the supply chains, global supply chains, are more expensive than localizing supply chains. We, we are going to see, uh, you know, there's plenty of numbers now that show that on, on many fronts, uh, especially with inventory being more expensive with 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 uh, exchange rates and, and also uh, interest rates, that we're going to see. No advantage in going offshore. After all, all you, all we are going offshore for, even if we relocate to another country outside of China, it's for low cost labor, and the, the contribution of low cost labor compared with the cost of the supply chain, is 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 you know it doesn't add up. It doesn't make any sense to grab that low cost labor and pay for all that long supply chain and the inventory in it. Now, if we if we go to Industry 4.0 and automate intelligently when we bring manufacturing back. I mean, if we bring back new products that have got new technology in them, and we put new processes around those with Industry 4.0, which reduces the labor content even further, 
when I run the numbers, there's no way it's, you're any way interested in low cost labor. You're more interested in line of supply, short inventory cycles, and just being close to the customer is another right. advantage. Right. Plus, we can control pollution. The other thing is pollution um, is a biggie. Um, if you, you're shipping complete pollution somewhere else, you can't control it. You don't know how the other guy's going to stack up in terms of their pollution controls. If we manufacture locally with our controls, we can, we can do our part on managing pollution better. We're going to take another brief break. Nigel, uh, obviously lots of uh, issues still to discuss. Uh, please stay with us uh, and uh, that's to our audience as well. We'll be back after the, these short messages. Thank you. And we're back here at Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here with Nigel Southway. He is the author of a new book, uh, Take Back Manufacturing, an Imperative for Western Economies. Uh, Nigel, uh, I guess we're at the stage of asking what can be done about this? Uh, what, what should businesses be doing better? What should governments be doing better? Um. Let's start, let's start with government. You know, government, the political will uh, in, in Canada especially needs, needs a lot of work. We need to, you know, the way I describe it, we need to stop worrying about who we are and spend more, much more on how we're doing. Uh, so we need, you know, for example, we spend 60 times uh, government money on culture compared to industry. So, you know, there's a lot of re-emphasis required, you know, let's, let's figure out what, what pays the rent here in our economy and, and belly up and do it. That's the first, you know, aggressive statement to government. I, I'd also say the first place to start with government is they need education. There's a significant number. I was in China and I, I toured plants with very senior members of the, of, of the, of the Chinese management teams uh, and government. And they knew manufacturing. They asked good questions. And at the end of the tour, they said, so how can we help? <laughs> we, we, we don't, we got a government that needs to understand manufacturing, may not even understand the questions to ask us. So before we can engage in a policy plan, we need to educate uh, the senior, senior members of our politician ranks exactly what we're talking about when we talk about manufacturing. They still think it's dark, dirty, dangerous, deafening, and smelly. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they don't understand it. It's high tech and, and you can walk around and eat your, your your lunch off the floor in some of these plants. So there's a little bit of education required. That's the first thing to do with, with government. And then they need to start to put together policies that may not be you know, free trade orientated. They may be much more to do with building back what we've got. Um, in, in, industry manufacturing folks need to actually look at uh, re-embracing uh, manufacturing culture. They've lost they become supply chain experts or, or, or manufacturing entities rather than manufacturers. So they need to relearn things like lean, um, Six Sigma. And, and, you know, so there's a redefining of what a manufacturing expert looks like inside a manufacturing organization is important. And they need to embrace Industry 4.0, which brings into the party all of the things they need to do. So, um, yeah, we got to relearn how to manufacture. We've lost a lot of the maker culture, especially with our young folks. So there's a lot to do with the culture side. That uh, that must be uh, must have been uh, e surprising even for you. This uh, degradation of our ability to make things. It's been 30 years. Some of, you know, it's been that's a long time. You know, and the other thing is we're going to have to reinvest in capital. You know, some of these plants are now. Uh, not the plants you're going to bring manufacturing back into. So we've got to recapitalize. So one of the big challenges is going to be how do we all afford the capital to do the right thing? Uh, it won't be, I didn't call it welcome back manufacturing. I called it take back manufacturing. Right. Uh, it was going to take some effort. So cap recapitalization intelligently with the right people involved, which means the financial community, um, and realize that that's where, the only way we're going to get value added back into our economy. Resources won't do it. You know, we're going to struggle to actually uh, make enough resources and ship them out to pay for our imports. So we got to reduce the imports. Um, the last thing is um, the educational system. We've got a cultural problem with the educational system. It's very siloed. I mean, I, I was in, in Britain, in Bristol, England, and I did a full British engineering apprenticeship at 16. I'm a product of that process. It embedded education, training, and experience all in one get-go right through. And it was paid for. Compare that to what our kids put up with today. Um, you know, they get edu educated, they can't get the training, and they can't get the experience. So we got to get our educational system to be more of a learning system 
where it combines those things together. Some effort being put in, but a long way to go. Um, but there's a lot of educators that still don't understand uh, that they're there for the community. You know, you, some of our uh, institutions are not doing night school anymore. You know, right. it used to be that you could re-engineer yourself by going to night school one day a week or two nights a week. That's not available as much as it should be. There's a whole bunch of things. And I taught um, at a community college for seven years recently on advanced manufacturing. So, you know, I feel competent to explain that there's a lot of good things going on in our educational system, but we need to figure out how to structure it so that we can get our young folks into industry and not, not be looking for a job at the end of their educational system. They need to get put into industry early like I was, and then they need to learn uh, and, and be experienced along the way so they end up with a career rather than they, they get to 22 years old, uh, overqualified and undertrained. Uh, it's an interesting point. I, I note we're going to go to a break, but I note that, uh, you know, uh, Monty McNaughton, who's the Ontario Labor Minister, probably you're familiar with him, but he's talking exactly what you're talking about as well. We're going to take another brief break. We'll be back after that. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement. Uh, here interviewing Nigel Southway. He's the author of a new book out, I guess out in August, Take Back Manufacturing, an Imperative for Western Economies. Nigel, uh, I guess I do have to ask this question because uh, you, you mentioned earlier, you know, 30 years in some cases, uh, uh, these uh, manufacturing uh, elements have been away uh, from our own shores. Is it too late in some cases, do you think? I think we have to be very selective. I, no, I don't think it's too late, but I think we have to prioritize the kinds of industries that we should focus on. Uh, for example, anything where we've got natural resources uh, should be up there at the top of the priority because we can then add value quicker than bringing in resources. So um, we need we need stuff that's, you know, food industry would be a good example where we, we need to focus ourselves, where we have to be very diligent about what we're importing and why, you know, is it duplicating um, effort? Um, and, and there's, you know, the wood industry, okay? Um, are, why aren't we making all the furniture for the world? We have all the wood, uh, things like that. So we have to question the sort of supply chain differently and assume that short is good. So if short is good, what do we do with that? in terms of the supply chain of the raw materials, et cetera. Uh, and, and, you know, perhaps uh, the, the, the oil industry, you know, the, the chemo, petrochemical industry, uh, we're piping at places. Maybe we shouldn't be doing that. Maybe we right. should be adding more value to it. So, so that's one thought. That's a lean strategy, right? Because that re reduces waste in your supply chain. So we need to, again, get around the table with economists and people that invest in these things and figure out how we have a lean economy. Um, using and utilizing what we already have under our feet uh, intelligently. Sure, sure. What's What's been uh, some various examples of reaction to the book? Uh, the, the great. I mean, the book. The book is is a tour de force of all the things we need to do. It covers, you know, like I've said, you know, it, it addresses, you know, what industry should do, what government should do, and yet, and I'm kind of, you know, a little bit rough. I mean, I mean, I, I don't pull any punches. It's it's really from the heart because, hey, it it it, it, it I may not be politically correct, but I am correct <laughs> okay. in a way in which I'm answering the questions. Um, so it, it there's a lot of people that uh, subscribe to the Take Back Manufacturing Initiative over the years. So they've all bought the book and I've got all that kind of, you know, I've got my fans already lined up, but uh, the feedback is it's timely, as you said, and it should be read. I'd wish, I wish every uh, senior member of parliament reads the book and they'll understand, they can then ask questions about manufacturing. Um, I think, I think as we go into a voting process, more people to read the book, we'd be better off with our voting. Our democracy would be stronger if we understand what we're up against. Um, it's not that technical. It, there's a lot of technical stuff in it, but it's easy read. That's what I'm, I'm told it's an easy read. Um, you, and, uh, sorry, are ahead. you getting, uh, are you getting a good reaction from businesses as well? Uh, supply chain professionals, experts, as well as the CEOs and CFOs? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, when we when we launched TBM, and this is a continuum, we got tremendous respect and support from just about everybody. All the technical magazines, you know, Plant Magazine, uh, all those kind of magazines will, will have an article from me in there real soon. You know, so that's how these guys communicate is through that media trade show. We, we When we have the next big trade show, there'll be some activity there as well. Um, and we talk it up. I mean, the way to do this is to communicate the message and get the message clear that we need to bring manufacturing back. It won't come back on its own. It won't be welcomed back. We have to take it back. A lot of work to do. And as you say, government, educational system, business leaders need to get together, and the financial community need to get around this. And there's money, be, you know, it, it's going to be prolifically useful to our prosperity if we get it right. If we don't do it, uh, bets are off. I'm more concerned about Canada than I am about the U.S. I think the U.S. are moving towards the right direction. But I was going to ask you that because we've got about 30 seconds left. But uh, are, are you are you happy with uh, a lot of the moves that the U.S. has made recently? I think uh, for, for all his sins, uh, Trump did a good job of kicking off a, a lot of issues and, and bringing focus to the issue. Uh, yeah, I'm very happy with what I see happening down there. Not here. We've got work to do. We've got to talk about it. Uh, and we will continue to talk about it. Unfortunately, we're out of time right now. So Nigel Southway, thanks very much for being part of this program. His book again is Take Back Manufacturing, an Imperative for Western Economies. Thanks again, sir. Thank you, Tony. The name of the book again is Take Back Manufacturing, an Imperative for Western Economies. The author is Nigel Southway. Our guest today, very interesting perspective on uh, manufacturing. Uh, its demise in uh, Western societies, including Canada, uh, but how to uh, get that reversed. And uh, a lot of, uh, lot of discussion about this in the government and corporate circles these days. Thanks for watching.